So in the following clip, this is live and let die clip. Okay, in the live and let die clip, we want to find the coefficient of dynamic friction, mu k, okay, between the boat and the grass. Okay, that's what we're going to try and do. Okay, we're going to try and find the, the mu k between the boat and the grass, basically from watching the clip. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the beginning of it. Just think about what you need to calculate. So bond here, going onto the grass over there. Okay. So, so as certain clips are easier to get data from than others. That's I don't make these movies. So, what what do we need to know when the boat when the boat is on the grass? The only force acting on it is friction, right? The only horizontal force. I mean, there's weight, but the only horizontal force, once it's on the grass, is friction. When it's in the water, it's got a uh, propeller pushing it forward. But when it's on the ground, the only force acting on it is friction, OK? So we want to figure out uh, how far it goes, or what's the value of mu k. So what do we need to know? The mass of the boat, yeah, we can estimate that. We might, the mass of the boat may cancel out, I'm not sure actually, but let's put that down. What else? We need the acceleration or the deceleration, right? So, how are we going to do that? Right, a distance is going to be distance or a time, okay? So we need the distance or the time over which it slows down. It's a little tricky. Um, we can use either. Okay. Um, might be easier to use time. So let's say it's just hit here. It's probably for bond, it's about. In fact, if we assume that their boat has the same friction coefficient, we can use their boat might get a better time with that. So we'll assume that they've just about stopped when they got to the um, swimming pool. So if we take the time from that, how long? About, I mean, you'd have more time to do it if it was a homework problem, obviously. We say three seconds, OK? So three seconds to slow down. So we end up with three seconds to slow down. OK, so we have a time. Um, we're trying to find the coefficient of friction. Um, what else do we need then? What would, what, would, what would V be if we're assuming they're stopping at the pool? U. Yeah. So what about you? What do we want to have an estimate for you? When that's when they first hit the ground. So we're in a speedboat. So speedboat, well, 20 meters per second. I mean, how fast does a speedboat go, do you think? Maybe 20 miles per hour, OK? So 20 miles per hour is about 10 meters per second, OK? So we have that data. Here we have the boat. We do a diagram. Uh, this could be. Well, okay, this could be water, this could be land, okay? So the boat first hits the land here, 
Okay, I mean, it's not that kind of boat, but it's just easier for me to draw. It has a mass m, okay, which means you can draw the weight as mg, and then the reaction force would be r, and they would be equal, because it's not, the boat's not moving up or down, okay? And it has a speed um, u, and it goes a certain distance or for a certain time, and we get a velocity v. So let's write down uh, Newton's second law, F equals ma. If we do it horizontally, because there's, there's no, the vertical equation tells us nothing. Okay? So if we do this horizontally, there is only one force acting on the, on the boat. And which direction would the frictional force act in? So here's, this, here's the water, here's the boat. Is the frictional force going to act that way or that way? That, right, it's backwards. The frictional force is always in the opposite direction to motion. So the frictional force would be acting this way. We call that Fk. The reason we use Fk is because it's moving. Okay? So in this case, if we take this direction as positive, this is our convention, we would have minus mu k r which is the frictional force, Fk if you like, is equal to Ma. If you want, you can put Fk here equals Ma. So the only force acting on it is friction. So this would be horizontally. Uh, vertically, this can be our horizontal. Vertically, we have F equals MA. And the only vertical forces are R and MG. So we have R minus MG equals 0. So we have R equals MG. OK? Everything clear there? What I'm, what I'm doing? There's some stuff left over. So we have one equation here. And we have one equation here. Okay? So you can substitute this equation into here because we know what R is. All right? So we do that. Okay? We pull a line here. Damn it. Okay? Dodgy chalk they gave me. So. If we, have, if we substitute that into here, we have minus mu k times by mg equals ma. So in actual fact, the mass cancels Okay, in this, in this case. So what is a? How do we find out a? We need some help. Somebody who hasn't spoke before. How am I going to find out a? We've got information, right? Right, so we should use the time, yeah? So let's do that. Okay. We have V equals U plus AT. And the A is the horizontal acceleration. Nothing to do with G. Horizontal. So then we plug in the values. We have 0 equals... Uh, 10 plus A times by 3, which gives us that A is minus 10 over 3. So what does the minus sign tell us? That it's accelerating. What's the direction of that acceleration? Right, so it's, it's, it's in the same, the acceleration is in the same direction as the force. It has to be, right? If you have F equals MA, this is the direction of the force because w when you write the friction law, it doesn't have a sign in it. That's why this comes out negative. So this acceleration has to be in the same direction as the force. They have, they have to be. So we, all we need to do now is plug this in and we can find mu k. So let me uh, 
get rid of that. Okay, so we have A equals minus 10 over 3 meters per second squared. And the equation that we had before, which I've rubbed off the board, is here. It's simply that minus mu K times by G is equal to A. So all we need to do now, so I'm just taking this equation, okay? All right? is put in some values and we get a value for mu. So this is minus 10 over 3. G we're going to say is 10, so I have mu k times by 10 is equal to minus 10 over 3, which tells us that mu k is equal to 1 over 3. Okay. So the only confusing thing really is the sign, the direction. Always try to think that the, the acceleration has to be in the same direction as the forces, the net force. 